Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you a quick tip on how to increase the speed of logging into our server over SSH. We do have the beautiful GUI or graphical user interface of Synology, but coming up we're going to be doing some tricks through the command line to help us with Docker. And I figured this would be helpful for you to see so that you can log into your system easier and also a little bit more secure. So there's a few steps to this. First thing that we need to do is go into our control panel and if we go to user and click on advanced we should be able to come down here and hit enable user home service. So this is going to put a home directory for, the for every user that's on my system. So I'm going to hit apply here and we should be able to see under the file station that there is a home section and here's my home folder. And uh, once I have that set up, we are going to want to go in, back into the control panel and we're going to search for terminal and SNMP. I'm just going to enable the SSH service and leave it on the default port of 22. So I can press apply here. So now what I can do is I can switch to my terminal and just do SSHJ, which is my Synology username at the IP of my Synology server, press enter, it's going to confirm the identity and put in the password that I used to log in to the Synology web portal. So we're connected to the server now and you can see it says J, my Synology username, at my server name. Uh, the only thing that's inconvenient about this is that my password is required every time to log in through SSH and it's randomly generated and it's quite long. So rather than using a password to authenticate, I'm going to use a key. And what we need to do is modify a file using sudo, which will bump me up to root. And we're going to use vim, and it should be under etsy ssh, and then it should be sshd underscore config. And I'll need to just enter my password again to authenticate that I can be root. I'm just going to drop down to under authentication here and uncomment this configuration. So I'm going to allow public key authentication and then we have this authorized keys file which we're going to have to create in my user folder. So I'm going to get rid of this as well and I'm just going to do colon wq for write and quit and the exclamation point to say yes for any other prompts. Now that I have that set what I need to do is actually make that authorized keys file. So we need to do make directory.ssh and we can see under here that it is created but the permissions are wide open and SSH does not allow that for security reasons. So we're going to actually modify the file permissions to 700 for .ssh. If we come back up we can see we have the correct file permissions now. Now what we need to do is actually create a file. We're just going to use touch from our home directory SSH and we are going to create that authorized keys file. For security reasons we're also going to change that so we're going to modify that to 600 and put in the same command as above or location of that file and that should now be secured. Now there's one other final thing that we have to secure we have to secure the user's home directory in order for SSH to allow the connection so that we're protecting the keys. You can see by running pwd my home directory is here so I'm actually going to copy this and change into the directory just above that. So if I view this out we can see that the J folder is set to be quite insecure. So to fix this we're going to do sudo chmod 700 J and now if we look at this we can see that the user directory has now been secured. So our server is now configured so I can close out of this and what I need to do is switch back here and restart the SSH service. So I do this by unchecking the enable SSH, re-enabling it and pressing apply. Now I'm not done yet. I have to configure my local Mac for this as well. So now you can see that I have this blue squiggly line so I'm going to clear this out. That blue squiggly line means that I'm on my local Mac. And I want to run the SSH keygen command. And this command will create us an RSA key. 
and we want the size of the key to be 4096. Now you can see here I'm logged in as a server side up user on my Mac. This is my home directory and it's going to create it in the hidden SSH folder and the private key is going to be defaulted to be called ID underscore RSA. That's completely fine. If you want to enter a passphrase you can do that too. But the most important thing is now that we have a key that's created and it's saved right here under ID underscore RSA. So now that we have the key created on our Mac, we need to set up our server to allow our key to authenticate as the user J. So to do that, I'm going to just cat out the contents of the key. Now when you're looking at this, there are three files in here. First of all is known hosts. Uh, we're not going to worry about that for now. But we have IDRSA and IDRSA.pub. We want the contents of the public key. So we're going to do IDRSA.pub we're going to pipe that out into PB copy. And what that does is it puts it on our clipboard. Next thing we'll need to do is now SSH back into our server. We'll need to enter our password one more time. And with our key on our clipboard, we just need to modify the authorized keys file for this user. And I press I to go into insert mode. I can paste this in, press escape to get out, and then do colon WQ for write and quit and the exclamation point to say yes for any other prompts. So from this point I should be able to close out of this. I'm going to clear out of here and I should just be able to do sshj at 192.168.57.11 and you can see now I'm authenticated with SSH by using the key on my Mac and this will save a ton of time in the future when we need to manage this server later on through SSH. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please give this video a thumbs up below. I'm also working on some additional videos so make sure you hit that subscribe button and get notified once they are available. If you have any questions I'd love to answer them. Just drop them down in the comments below or hit us up on Twitter. You can also help us keep the lights on by supporting us on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Looking forward to seeing you next time.